Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Project Destination Clark webinar on the Career Connection Center. My name is Lexi Alm. I'm an Associate Director of Admissions at Clark, and I'll be your host for today's webinar. With me today, I have three panelists who are going to answer your questions about the Career Connection Center and preparing for life after Clark. Michelle, Ben, and Marimo, would you please introduce yourselves? Sure. Hi, everybody. My name is Michelle Flint, and I am the Director of Career Development here at Clark. Hi, my name is Marie Maoka. I'm a sophomore majoring in biochemistry and molecular biology. Um, my hometown is in Japan. Um, I'm also a student athlete on a varsity volleyball team. And I'm also involved in uh, Clark University Rapid Response, which is a uh, emergency medical service on campus that provides like um, first aid to all the students on campus 24 seven. And I'm also doing a resident advisor on campus uh, residents. Nice to meet you all. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Ben Filippi. I'm a junior at Clark University from New York City. Uh, my major is media, culture, and the arts, and I'm a double minor in Spanish and business management. Um, on campus, I'm the co-president of a club called the Pub Entertainment Committee, and that's the club on campus that brings concerts monthly to school. Additionally, I'm a member of the Radio of Clark University, and uh, I'm glad to be here today. Great, thank you all. So we're going to start with a quick overview, but before we get going, I'm going to clarify a few things regarding the Zoom webinar platform. So somewhere on your screen, you should have some options for how to engage with us. This might be at the bottom of your screen or in the top corner, depending on what type of device you're using. We're gonna use two of these options today. Please use the chat feature if you're having any technology issues or need assistance. My colleague Natasha is behind the scenes today and she will be happy to help you out. When you're ready to ask a question, we're gonna be looking at the Q&A feature to answer those. So please submit them there. You can begin submitting questions at any time during the beginning of this presentation. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get started. Michelle is gonna give you an overview of the Career Connection Center and touch on some frequently asked about topics and then we'll get right into your questions. Michelle, go ahead. Great. So hi again, everybody. The Career Connection Center, of which I'm a part, is five career-related offices in one. And you can see the five here. They are career development, employer engagement, on-campus student employment, the Clark Connect alumni mentor platform, and opportunity funding. Next slide, please. This slide shows a broad overview of where our students are about six months after graduation. If you've been looking around at different schools, you might see that our 44% rate in continuing education is quite high, and that is because about 30% of every graduating class takes advantage of the accelerated degree program. Next slide. A detailed look shows that our students are at nationally known companies across industries, and this is just their first job. Next slide. Similarly, our graduates go to a wide range of graduate schools, law schools, and medical schools. And on the right-hand column, you can see there are all different kinds of health fields represented. So how do we accomplish this? Well, first of all, we have amazing students, like the two we have here today. Um, in addition to that, we offer wraparound programming. We have individual counseling, events almost every week, direct connections to alumni, mentors, and employers, and on-demand digital career resources. Our goal is to surround your students with opportunities and resources every step of the way. And this slide and the next are screenshots from our website showing events that we offered this spring. Next slide. And as you can see, we have a mix of networking opportunities, career fairs, and how-to workshops. Here, I wanna call out one of the pieces we're most proud of, and that is the Clark Connect Alumni Mentor Platform. We're very proud of this because we know that one of the most powerful tools any person has to develop their professional career is their professional network both before graduation and after graduation. And so we designed the Clark Connect platform with this in mind to grow your students' network of alumni mentors, 
networking opportunities, and alumni-sponsored career opportunities. Launched just three years ago, we already have more than 2,000 alumni mentors on the platform across all majors and industries, and more than 300 alumni-sponsored job and internship posted opportunities. And those are opportunities where an alumni was specifically looking to hire a clerky. Next slide. And all of this means that no matter what your students' interests and passions and goals, designing a great career after Clark is not as heavy a lift as it may seem. Wonderful. Next slide. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much, Michelle, uh, mm -hmm. for that excellent context to start our conversation today. Um, I think we're now uh, just about ready to begin taking your questions. I will just remind you to use the Q&A function to ask them. And in an effort to get as many of your questions uh, as possible answered today, my colleague Natasha will be answering some behind the scenes in writing and I'll be selecting questions for our panelists to answer uh, live on air here. Um, there are a lot of you here at the moment, so I apologize in advance that we won't be able to get to every question today, but we will be following up with the answers to those we don't get to. So feel free to, to leave them here or follow up with us via email after the webinar is over if you have another question that comes up. All right, so Ben and Marimo have been waiting patiently to tell you about their student experience with the Career Connection Center. So I'm gonna start out by having them each talk about the ways that they have utilized the available resources and how that has guided their paths thus far at Clark. Marimo, do you wanna start us off? Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, hi again. Um, so this, uh, no, this, this semester I applied for an uh, internship in the medical field uh, for this summer. And, um, my first interaction with Career Connection Center was uh, getting a check on my resume to submit for the internship. And I got that check with Michelle. And <laughs> I really felt that like, I felt really comfortable talking with Michelle and I felt I was, I was very supported. So I asked her for, my, um, for help in my interview. And what it helped me a lot was that because of this coronavirus, um, the interview happened online. Uh, the actual interview happened online. And so my practicing, like my mock interview with Michelle also happened via Zoom and it like really mocked my real interview. So that was really helpful. Um, and in that uh, mock interview, Michelle had shared me, shared uh, like a lot of uh, example questions that I didn't think about <laughs> by myself and that really helped me prepare uh, answers that I can provide to the people um, at, the, at the internship. And um, also because it was my first time doing an interview, like mock interview or interview in general online, she also sh helped me with tips on like preparing my camera, like, <laughs> um, like let's say like my back Ground, like it should be very like neutral it should be really like messy <laughs> and um, like lighting and all that that actually really helped me too and so yeah that's my experience with Clark Connect and also <laughs> I was able to get into the internship so I'm very thankful for that. <laughs> Bravo. Thanks Marimo. Ben go ahead. Sure so my experience with the Career Connection Center um, I'm a junior um, has been pretty multifaceted throughout my uh, past three years at Clark. Um, most importantly, or I guess most significant to where I am at today, um, has been their guidance and assistance through the Clark Connect platform and, um, and other uh, interactions I've had with them is networking and the ability to connect with Clark alums who are in a field of interest to me. So I have a strong interest in the music industry based on, uh, that was sort of built based on my experience in the pub entertainment committee, which I joined in freshman year and now I'm the co-president of. And I was able to connect with Clarkies um, who have graduated from Clark, obviously, who are in the industry. Uh, one woman uh, who runs a PR firm, her own PR firm in Brooklyn, and another who is a talent agent. And uh, both of those connections that I made, I wrote to them through the platform and um, was kindly invited to their offices and was able to speak with them one-on-one -on -one, um, directly to hear about their experience in the industry, um, to receive guidance during internship application processes, 
um, which turned out to be successful. I actually worked at a record label last summer doing e-commerce marketing. And in the spring leading up to that, I, I really um, utilized their assistance and guidance uh, throughout that process and ended up landing something, which was great. Wonderful. So we will now start taking some audience questions. So jump into the Q&A feature and start asking those uh, as they come to you. But we're going to get started with a, a few that we have going on uh, already here. So one thing we haven't touched on much yet today, uh, and I'm going to pose this to Michelle first, and then uh, Marimo and Ben, you can jump in if you've had this experience on campus. Um, but Michelle, can you talk a little bit about student employment opportunities on campus? Um, and specifically, we have a question about um, student employment opportunities for international students, how many hours per week uh, are available, that sort of thing. Right, uh, that's a great question. We have a lot of students who are interested in on-campus employment. Um, one thing that is important to note is that we have set up a system to support you in your application for that. The, the unfortunate reality is that there are far more students interested in that on-campus employment than we have positions. Even though we're actually working right now to increase the number for the uh, for the upcoming fall semester. So in the summer, you all, uh, once you decide, yes, I'm coming to Clark, you're going to get a series of communications from us to help you prepare and be as competitive as you can as incoming first years. We're gonna work with you virtually to get your resume and cover letters ready, and we're going to get you set up on our our internal job board where all of those positions are posted and help you learn how to use that. And then you'll apply directly to the various offices all over campus as you prefer. Um, so, and, and one thing that we're also growing are the number, of, the number of positions that are reserved for first years to get that foot in the door. So we're really excited about that too, that there are going to be um, quite a number that are reserved for first years. And, so there are, there are certain limits to how many hours a week. Um, if you are domestic, meaning if you're a resident of the United States, your limit is 25 hours per week. If you're an international student, your limit is 20 hours per week. Um, we, that's just the university's guideline to make sure that students don't become overwhelmed and can really do well in their studies. Fantastic. I'm so excited to hear that we have more positions reserved for first years. That's a great change this year. Mm -hmm. so, uh, Marima or Ben, do you have any experience with on-campus jobs that you'd like to talk about? Um, I do not. I, I'm just a club leader. I haven't uh, applied um, or sought out an on-campus position. That's totally yeah. okay. <laughs> All <Yeah>. right. <laughs> So then let's move on to our next question. So Marima touched a little bit on the advising component of the Career Connection Center, but um, we have a question about how does advising work? Uh, maybe let's talk a little bit about how students access uh, career advising and then what the many forms that that can take are. Marimo had some, some interview prep that she spoke about, but Michelle, can you talk a little bit about how a first year student, for example, might access that advising? Sure, absolutely. Um, stepping back for a minute, I also want to point out that there are lots of different places where students can get advising across campus. Quite a number of departments offer advising. Um, and we all are really good at referring back and forth. And so if you end up at the wrong place, they'll refer you to us, no problem. With regards to ad advising in our department specifically, every one of those offices we saw on the first slide uh, it has its own dedicated advising. So there is someone dedicated to on-campus employment advising for students. There's someone dedicated to funding opportunities advising for students, actually. Um, and so, so that's there. And then on top of that, we have five career advisors for all things career related. And the way that students make an appointment is they go on our website, which is connections.clarku.edu. That'll take you right there. And if you click on the About Us button, it takes you to the page where we show how the advising is devised. So basically, there are, the advisors are assigned to career clusters, I'm sorry, to major clusters. So there's a STEM advisor, there's an arts and humanities advisor, there's, uh, there's actually two social science advisors because that's a, quite a big group of students. And then there's a management econ advisor. And so as a first year, you're absolutely welcome to make an appointment. 
And so we would just suggest that you make an appointment with an advisor based on one of the majors that you're considering, knowing that you can change advisors at any time. But we set it up that way so that ideally most students will have the same advisor the whole four years there at Clark. And if you're a double major, which is actually quite common, you can work with both people or just pick the one that you feel more comfortable with. And, uh, and we will be, if you have questions, you can just make an appointment with us anytime. We have actually five advisors for the number of undergrads we have is a, is a really, um, a really terrific advising ratio. Um, we have a lot of advisors compared to other schools our size, and so it's really not hard to make an appointment at all. Awesome, thank you. Um, so I have a question that's targeted for our students now. So Ben and Marimo, you both can answer this one, um, but, uh, and you've talked about kind of diverse um, types of engagement that you've had. Uh, so I'm gonna expand this, this person's question just a little bit. They're asking about how do you balance work uh, uh, you know, your schoolwork, your internships, your clubs and organizations, other opportunities with uh, your studies um, at Clark. So Ben, do you want to start on this one? Sure. Um, balancing. I mean, it's, it's an acquired practice. I mean, you know, it may seem things when you, you know, you're going to be, a, you'll be a first year and you're going to go to the club fair that happens in the what this first or second week of school and mm -hmm. you're going to see you know over a hundred clubs are out on the green and you're going to take all those flyers you're going to write your name down and you're going to go to every single one of those info sessions and it's going to seem overwhelming but um, exciting at the same time and from that you know you'll scale back and see what you're most interested in where where you'll return to um, and you know clubs are quite accommodating to people's work um, from the clubs that I've joined and have led um, so, you know, the commitment and the time slot is often, uh, at least for my club, reflected by uh, what the availability of the club members are. So we try to be accommodating in that way, but also um, having sort of what at least makes school, like sometimes uh, classwork can be integrated with what you're doing in your club, whether it be a volunteer experience or, um, a research project or something and sort of making things seem less overwhelming is really finding interesting and unique ways to connect the two. So for example, um, like volunteering, like uh, for a management class that I took in my freshman year, uh, a component of that was to volunteer and uh, there's a group called Clarkies in the community uh, on campus. And so uh, with their guidance and, and I was able to complete this volunteer project that was a requirement for the class, but then also get at the same time getting you know volunteer experience and um it was just rewarding overall so in that experience i was working at a nearby school uh, reorganizing uh their library awesome thanks ben marimo how do you balance your life and opportunities that you've had at clark um since first year what i'm doing is to visualize everything so whenever i have um deadlines for like uh academic work or uh club or like my, like my games for volleyball, I would write all of that in like one big calendar and break, um, and I would make one week plan for each week. And sometimes you can't stick to that plan, but um, I think it's really important that you visualize your priorities and what you need to finish. And I would like check off the things I've, I'm, I'm finished and like, I have a planner, <laughs> I actually have it here. It has a calendar on like, like a calendar on top and then like one week planner on bottom. Mm -hmm. So like you can see the, like a big picture, but then you can also focus on like one week plan. And I think it's really important that even if you know in your head what your deadlines are, it's important that you always write it down or like you visualize it because um, in college, like there's there's like more there's more deadlines than you think <laughs> and so I think that's one of the uh, tips that I would advise to do for uh, like incoming students <laughs> Great. thank you so uh, I think this next one is likely to at least start off with Michelle um, so someone would like to know how are students exposed to the types of professions that are out there uh, in their field besides internships do professors do this uh, do they go to the career 
office mm -hmm. visits? What kinds of exposure? Um, or how do you typically guide students in finding a potential future career fit? That's a really, really great question. Um, so we frequently talk about the career ecosystem at Clark. And, and what that means is that we're not the only source of career exploration on campus. M many, many faculty have a, a dedicated time and activities to helping students within their major explore the options. And so that might mean in classes, that might mean bringing in speakers, that might mean field trips. Um, and, and so faculty and other offices are, are bringing events on campus. We are doing events, as I said, almost every week, and a large number of them are employers from various industries coming on campus or connecting virtually to talk about what their industry is like. Um, and in addition to all those events, um, we also have a process of career exploration that we can do with the student. And so if a student comes to me, I just, I assess where they're at and I teach them how to explore their options in a kind of methodical way. And part of that always includes talking to alumni on the Clark Connect platform in careers that seem interesting to them, right? The formal term for that is informational interviewing and just chatting for 20 or 30 minutes on Zoom and saying, hey, tell me more about what you do. What's it really like? Would you do it again? Is it what you thought it would be? You know, what, what should I know that I couldn't find out online? And, and going through that process. And then in addition to that, test driving ones they're very interested in. That might include internships, that might include volunteering. We have an incredibly robust volunteering um, network here. And, and of course, through their studies. And through all that, our hope is that by their junior year, if not sooner, they'll have made a, a really, um, well-educated decision as to where they want to go. Great. Can I add on to that? Yes, please. Um, um, ask you. Yeah, I came into Clark completely undecided and um, took me a while to actually pick a major. And I think Clark is a great place to be undecided because of, mm -hmm. um, well, first off, the P there's a set of requirements that you have to take. There are six classes um, in various, le they're called learning perspectives, and it allows you to explore different areas of interest. Um, so there's like a science one, uh, uh, a history one and so on and so forth. So that was a great tool for that. But additionally, the Career Connection Center, I actually went to them in my freshman year. And um, because of my uh, sort of indecisive nature in picking a major, and I thought a really, like Michelle said, a really valuable way of looking at it that I hadn't really thought of before is like looking at your major from a bird's eye view, from a future perspective. So giving me sort of like an exposure to a set of careers and then looking back and saying, hey, what could I study um, as an undergrad that would prepare me for something like this? Because I feel like in many cases, a lot of people pick something to study and then they're like, oh, how, unless it's something, you know, specific, it's like, how, like, how would I then apply this to a job in the future? Um, versus like looking at something like really being goal, goal minded and career minded and thinking, oh, here's how I can, here's what I can study and here's where I can end up which I think was sort of one of the most valuable pieces of advice I got from the Career Connection Center in deciding a major. Awesome, thank you so much. So the next question is about um, resources for finding things like summer jobs, internships, um, and there's a, a note in here about paid versus unpaid internships. So can you talk a little bit about, um, probably Michelle can start off on this one, but the, the platforms and resources that we have available for finding those opportunities, and then also, um, you know, the paid versus unpaid question of what do you do if a great opportunity comes around and it's not paid? Um, what sorts of things do we have to support students in that regard? Right, okay. Good question. I have this conversation a lot with students. Um, I basically teach students something I wish I had known when I was 20 and didn't figure out till I was 35. Um, there are three basic ways to find an internship or a job. You can look for posted opportunities and I teach students where to look based on their interests. We have in-house job boards and also to look for industry specific job boards. The second method is to work their network, which is what Clark Connect is all about. And I teach students how to do that in a way that feels both authentic and comfortable, right? 
um, because it's still true that between 40 and 80 percent of opportunities are unposted depending on the industry right that's, that's mind-blowing when you think about that um, and then the third way is to create their own opportunity to approach a, a company and say hey i really like doing x could i do x for you this summer and again depending on the industry that really works right and so I, I teach students, these are the three ways to go about it. I recommend you do at least two of the three. And if they find something paid, great. If they find something unpaid, that's where the opportunity funding comes in. And we're really excited about that because students can apply for basically a stipend or a fellowship for the summer to cover their living expenses while doing something really amazing that's unpaid. And that can be an internship, that can be a self-designed project, or that can be a research project. And we have, if you go to our opportunity funding page, you'll see quite a few of them listed. There are actually others in other departments that are self-run, um, but, but there's quite a lot of that on campus. And, and so that's another resource that we're very proud to offer. That's wonderful, thank you. Um, I would like to get a little bit more into Clark Connect as a platform. This is a, a question that we've kind of skirted it a little bit um, this whole time. And I think, Ben, could you talk a little bit about what that actually looks like when you go into Clark Connect for a student. Um, what is that experience like? How do you access our alumni? Um, what does that tool actually function? Uh, how does that function in, in your experience? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Clark Connect is like a, uh, like a white pages. I don't know if that's like a data to dated reference. That's, <laughs> but it's like a phone book of Clark alum. And all these people, who are on Clark Connect are people that have voluntarily uh, selected to put their profiles up and are willing to help students. And there's a ton of people on there, but like, so from students' perspective, what you do, you set up your profile, it plugs in uh, a good amount of information from like what you've already put into Clark from your Clark profile as a student, but then you put in, um, you know, the clubs that you're part of, uh, career interests, um, and things that might not reflect just on a base profile like that and things that you want to explore and what you want to get out of a connection with an alum. And those things could be mentorship. Those things could be interview prep, or it could be something like uh, interview prep, mentorship. Uh, just a conversation in your informational interview, like Michelle mentioned, just to learn about what their job is like and what their industry is like. So, um, and that's all just several clicks away and several drop down boxes away. And then it pops up a, a screen to write them a message and um, they're often quick to respond. Yeah. Great. Marimo or Michelle, anything to add on what that that platform entails? Um, I can, oh, sorry. Oh, you yeah, can, go, sorry. you go right ahead. Um, so I actually connected with one of the alumni. Uh, he works as emergency physician and I connected, I messaged him and see if I can shadow him. And because of this coronavirus, it got canceled, but I, I still keep in touch with him. And um, I was able to get like an appointment <laughs> to uh, shadow him. And um, yeah, and so in that sense, like it's really a convenient platform because like, you, um, yeah, it, it's really like a phone book. <laughs> you can like um, um, search your, um, a search alumni based on what, what you want, what you're interested in, like what you want to ask or like what you want to get out from connection. <laughs> yeah. And just like, I know I said this before, but really just to reiterate, like it's really nice knowing that the people that are on there are people that want to help and want to talk to you because like yeah. LinkedIn, for example, you know, messages can, are just like sort of like shot in the dark and you don't know if you'll get a response or not. Mm -hmm. And it's really just comforting to know that they're there to help you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so Michelle, I think this next one, uh, I know when we were speaking before uh, in our preparation for this webinar, you mentioned that this is the time of year you are in right now, uh, which is helping our, our seniors to figure out what's next. Um, so we have a question about the career counseling for full-time jobs after graduation with a completed degree um, and what that looks like. And because I know you were in the thick of that uh, when we were speaking previously, could you talk a little bit about what your approach is to reaching seniors and making sure that they're having these, uh, or making these plans in far enough in advance and, and doing that sort of um, process. Right, right. So one thing that 
students will notice when they get to Clark is that we have a suggested timeline of career development, right? And when we have uh, suggested goals for all four years. And so if students take advantage of our suggestions and, and you know, keep pace with us, then by the time they're in their senior year, they're really ready to go and they know what to do, right? And a lot of seniors do that. They, they, they know where they're headed and they know what they need to do next. And they need a little interview prep and they're rolling. Um, other seniors who are still a little unsure, we, we take the time to assess where they're at and make them feel comfortable with wherever they're at. We definitely have seniors who come to us spring of their senior year and say, okay, now what? And, and, and that's really okay. I, I really understand uh, w what that place is like. So, so we create a very welcoming environment to just get them up to speed. And so once students know where they want to be after they graduate, then it's really the same process as for finding inter internships, right? It's finding posted opportunities on the right job boards. It's working your network. Um, not as much to create your own opportunity there, right? Um, but we really um, nudge students towards putting themselves out there and networking. Um, and just keeping a steady pace. In fact, right now we, we are in the middle of an email campaign and we're sending an action-oriented email to seniors every single week saying, okay, now do this, now do this, now do this, just to keep them rolling. Um, and then, best of all, we are here for seniors after they graduate. And it's really important for you to know is that um, our digital resources are available to you forever. And our one-to-one -one advising is uh, unlimited for you in the first six to 12 months after you graduate. So if you still haven't found anything, we can work with you over the summer virtually from wherever you live and get you headed in the right direction and assess why you're a little stalled and, and just help to move you along, right? So, so you're not cut off. Um, and, and that combined with our having amazing students is why our, our placement rate, if you will, is so high. Right. And just to kind of jump back to what you said, Michelle, about the, the four-year uh, recommended timeline that you have, um, for our, our folks who are attending right now, um, they are facing the first year of this intended timeline in mm -hmm. most cases. Can you just talk about what that first year recommended timeline looks like? Absolutely. Um, so I'll give you the general answer, and then there's going to be a caveat for pre-law, pre-health. All right, so, so for most people, your first year is about two things. It's about get to know yourself in a new context and get to know what you like, right? There are options available to you in college that just weren't available to most people in high school. And so we really recommend you just spread out, try new things and pay attention to what you like and don't like. And that's both academically and also with clubs and other involvement. And that process really has to unfold before a, a look at career options makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so really we take the pressure off to most students and say, just get, just get out there, try stuff, hit, and then pay attention. Now, if someone comes to me as a first year and says, you know, I want to do cancer research. Great. Okay, well, we'll move you on to the sophomore steps. No problem, right? Um, now, the caveats were that pre-law and pre-health, if you know that you're probably in those, in those paths, we, we do recommend you get started on certain things a little sooner, but we have a dedicated pre-health advisor and a dedicated pre-law advisor, as you may already know, and we can just make sure those students are connected with them and with their listservs, and, and so we just get rolling on certain things a little faster. And to kind of piggyback on that, um, we have someone asking about, uh, do you recommend that first semester, first year students uh, get jobs on campus or off campus? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I would say there's no pressure. <laughs> if uh, if, you, if a, stu a student should do something besides class their first year, that's the thing that I would say, right? And I see Ben and Marimo nodding vigorously, right? <laughs> If, there are a lot of students that um, want to develop office skills and a, a job is a great way to do that or they really need to earn income and okay, great, right? Um, you notice neither Marimo nor Ben are working on campus, right? They have, they have other interests 
they're pursuing and that's fine too. So I would say either way, do something other than go to class. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, so now I'm going to uh, wrap up with a final question um, for all three of you. Uh, and I think this is a, one that we've been seeing some version or another of on many of our webinars, um, because I think the, the, the nice thing for our families uh, watching to know is, is what do you, um, what, what advice would you give them as they're preparing for uh, attending a college or university and, and ideally attending Clark? Um, what advice do you have for admitted students and families so that they can be sure to maximize their experience and prepare for the next steps after Clark uh, as incoming students? Mm -hmm. Students, do you want to start? Sure. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, you can go. <laughs> okay. Um, so I think I have two major advice. Um, one is, as Michelle said, is to like try new things. One of the reasons why I chose Clark was um, because of it's this liberal arts education. And I also really like the PLS requirements. Um, so like right now I'm on pre-med track, but back in high school when I was in Japan, I didn't like science classes. <laughs> but then I took biology and chemistry in freshman year just to see how they teach differently in US. And then I was very like interested in it. I, I really liked the lectures. I really liked the classes. And then I decided to major in biochemistry. So, um, so one thing is to like not have like uh, how do you say like a prejudice? Like um, don't don't take classes because you think you like it, or don't don't not take classes because you think you don't like it. Just try, even if you think you might not like it because sometimes you um, you get to connect with really great professors or you get to connect with really great friends in those classes too. And I think that's a really great aspect of um, going outside of your comfort zone. And, and uh, one more thing that I still keep in mind is to like reach out for resources by myself and not wait for uh, them to come to you because <laughs> Um, there are a lot of uh, good resources on campus, but you have to do some research and you have to reach out by yourself because um, there's a limited amount of people in the advising, <laughs> advising side. So I think to be always um, open to new resources, but always, um, uh, I don't know, uh, keep researching and like listening to like your interests and uh, yeah, please reach out. <laughs> and not just the advising center, but also to uh, upperclassmen and also to your friends too. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I completely agree with what Maria Mo said, both about the PLS requirements. The, some of those classes were actually some of my favorite classes at Clark. So um, that was a great opportunity for me to explore. And also, um, yeah, exploring and really taking advantage of the resources. Um, no one is going to be pulling you to do anything. And that's going to be the same at any college you go to. You do have to seek out these things. But something great about Clark is that there are so many amazing resources. And as shown on this on the PowerPoint slide, they're all they're all really in one space. They're they're really just footsteps away. All you have to do is cross a like a 10 foot uh three. I don't even know. It's getting smaller and smaller in Main Street, that crosswalk. But <laughs> But it's a really, really, it's really all there for you. And all you have to do is just walk inside. Everyone's going to be super helpful, both online and in person. So yeah, really taking advantage of what's there and um, going to the events and looking at your email because there's a lot of great email communications that tell you all that stuff. Um, and yeah, just there's a great group of people here to support, here to support you and in no matter you know what direction you want to take. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so for me, I, I've kind of hinted at this, but but my core advice is uh, don't wait. Don't wait until spring of your senior year to consider what you want to do after Clark. We uh, start early, start exploring, come to us and say, I don't know. Um, we're so eager to help you. And if you take advantage of what we have to offer, by the time you get to your senior year, you're going to be well on your way. 
Yes, this is uh, the beginning of a really big adventure and you've got some really amazing people to, to help you figure that all out and navigate that. So I hope that we've um, addressed some of that for you today and answered some of your questions. I wanna thank my fantastic panelists for their, their help today. Um, truly, it was wonderful to get to hear more about all of your experiences. Um, and thank you all so much for joining us this afternoon for our Career Connection Center panel. We're excited to continue our Project Destination Clark webinar series tomorrow, Friday, April 10th, where we will be joined again by our wonderful faculty. So this time uh, from the departments in the humanities. So you can see the full webinar list as well as watch recordings of previous webinars at clarku.edu slash admitted slash webinars. And we hope to see you again soon. In the meantime, stay well, stay safe, and don't hesitate to reach out to us with any further questions. Bye everyone.